This conference will now be recorded. All right, so now we're official. Um, welcome everyone. My name is Mart Bagstead. I'm the Trade Sales Director for Springer Nature for the Americas. Um, and we're so happy that you're joining us for our first book talk. We are recording this, so the goal is also to distribute it later. Um, so, And we'll make sure you have that file link, um, the presentation and other materials about us as a follow-up. Um, but yes, just very glad to have you here today. We're starting with a quick video. The roots of our business are more than 175 years old. When our flagship journal Nature was first published 150 years ago, only a third of the world's population were able to read. Today, the majority can. Nearly two thirds of the world's population lived in extreme poverty. Now, most are poverty free. And average life expectancy was just 38, where today that number is over 70. Yet despite this progress, inequality still remains and the world faces new and significant societal challenges, such as climate change, universal access to healthcare, and quality education. Progress will only be possible because of the vital role that scientists, researchers, academics, and educators play. And in a world where truth is verified by social media clicks and fake news is easily spread, they are more reliant than ever on being able to share their insight and trust their sources. This is where we play such a pivotal role. As custodians of the academic record, we aim to safeguard the independence and veracity of research, helping researchers to trust and build upon the discoveries that have gone before. Each experiment, every finding, taking its place in the network of discovery and enabling researchers to stand on the shoulders of giants. All right, so now we're gonna jump into the presentation. That video goes on, um, but it gets a little granular in terms of research articles and stuff. So if you're interested in seeing more, it's on um, the Springer Nature um, website. So as I said, welcome to our first book talk. Um, next slide, please. Um, so I think if you don't know anything about Springer Nature, I think our mission can be summed up very easily in two words, which is advancing discovery. Um, and ultimately, we are looking to connect researchers, educators, clinicians, professionals, to access to quality information they need and the ability to disseminate that information to sort of advance their, their work and their studies. Um, at the heart of what we do is the idea that science and learning truly matter. And you're gonna recognize some brands um, that fall under our umbrella, things like Scientific American, Springer Healthcare, Nature Research, and Biomed Central. Next slide, please, thanks. Um, so Springer Nature as a company, if you don't know this already, is five years old. In 2015, the merger between Springer, Springer Business and Media and portions of Macmillan Science and Education was announced, and that formed the Springer Nature Group. Um, so we are organized into several um, three divisions, research, professional, and education, and we have um, portfolios that span books, journals, databases, and other services. Um, those of us on the call today are concerned with the books business, um, and we sit within the research organization. Um, I'm just gonna make a quick mention of Macmillan because this often causes um, some confusion, especially with booksellers and other um, published people in the industry. Um, so Macmillan Education and under that Macmillan International Higher Education and the imprint Palgrave Macmillan all sit within the Springer Nature family. Um, other Macmillans such as Macmillan Publishers or Macmillan Learning actually operate as completely independent companies, although we are affiliates of theirs, meaning that we share some common management under Whole Spring. Next slide, please. Um, so we as a publisher are really committed to excellence in book publishing, and we actually have the largest and most comprehensive academic book catalog available. That means about 300,000 ISBNs. It means we publish upwards of 13,000 ISBNs or new titles a year. Um, and I just wanted to quickly look at sort of our core imprints. So Springer, very well known in the science, technology, engineering, and medicine space. Um, so things like biomedicine, um, and mathematics, for example, very strong list there, although that imprint is quite all-encompassing. 
Um, the C you see at the center of your screen stands for Copernicus. These are our popular science titles. They sit under the Springer umbrella. Think topics such as astronomy, life sciences, and ecology, much more geared towards general readership. And if you like the series today, we have one that will look at more Copernicus titles coming up in a week or two. Um, Palgrave Macmillan is um, humanities and social science imprint. Um, it's very interdisciplinary in its scope, very well known for subjects like politics, history, business, and economics. Um, Red Globe Press is a relatively new imprint in name. They used to um, be branded Palgrave Textbooks, but we uh, gave it a new brand a couple of years ago to alleviate confusion, which we hope has helped. Um, and they are publishing HSS textbooks, and there's a very strong study skills list there that um, actually has some nice retail potential and is worth mentioning. Um, and then why we're here today, A Press, um, and you're going to hear this from the experts. Our, our team of A Press editors is joining us, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. Um, but these books are very much targeted at IT professionals and developers and those in the tech community. Next slide, please. All right, and this slide might look like a lot of information, but I think sort of the heart of why we're giving this talk today is that we believe our crossover trade titles are accessible to a large audience and uniquely backed by the academic prestige of Springer Nature um, and diversifying our reach. Um, so more public librarians, more booksellers know who we are and sort of have access to more curated content that's appropriate for their markets is definitely a central part of our strategy. Um, to give that context, we have 550 expert editors based all around the globe that enable our publishing program. Our books undergo a rigorous peer review process, which ensures their quality, and um, which I hope the video conveyed at the beginning. Um, we're very much focused on topics of popular science and also global concerns. So things like the UN Development Goals very much factor into our publishing strategy. Next slide, please. And then this slide is really just meant to kind of tie in the idea that whatever is happening in the world is kind of what we tend to see play up in our book sales. We have some titles that obviously sell fairly well all the time, many of those because of adoptions and things like that. But when we talk about sort of what's in demand or what's trending, um, that it often ties into what we're ha what's happening in the world. And obviously there's been a lot happening in the world this year. Um, so race and social justice, pandemics, mental health, financial, finance, economic turmoil, all of these ideas, I think definitely, um, we have a broad portfolio, I think of quality information that can support sort of the interest in understanding what's happening in the world. Um, but also if you ever need help curating information because you're looking for more information on a subject, um, we more than likely have something to offer. So please reach out. Next slide, please. That's it for me. Okay, thank you so much, Mart, for the brand overview on Springer Nature. I'd like to take some time to introduce all the people who are on the call today. I'm Jenny Liu from the trade sales team. We had just met Mart Vagstad. She is our trade sales director. And today with us on the call is also Terry Yoshiuchi, our trade sales analyst. We are so excited to launch the first book talk today but before we do i'd love to ask attendees to introduce yourself briefly in the chat box we'd love to get to know you and uh, know where you're from and we're excited to kick off um, uh, this really great session with with you guys and so without further ado i'd like to hand this session over to Velmid and the editors at a press Next slide, please. Thank you very much, Jenny. Um, my name is Velmoet Spaar, and I am the managing, managing director for APRES. And APRES is the technology and web development imprint within Springer Nature. I am based out of New York, although I might not sound like it, I am, um, as a good part of the APRES editorial team is, although we also have editors in the United Kingdom and a growing team in India, because there are a lot of developers um, in India that we also publish books with. There are currently about 26 million developers in the world, and that number is expected to grow to 29 million within the next three years. But it's not only those working in tech, 
who want to learn how to code. More and more coding is seen as generally a good skill to have, a good language to speak, if you will, a general life skill. So um, a good part of our audience, and we'll get to that later in the presentation, are indeed still working people in tech, but more and more we also serve newer audiences, beginners, teenagers just learning how to code. Um, so the audience for the APRES books in the past few years has in that sense really widened. Um, our books um, are bought more often in print than you might think. When you think about techies, you might think, oh, that's going to be ebooks only. I have to say that I was a little bit surprised when I started working on the APRES list how many people told me at conferences and such that they preferred print books because then they scribble in the margins and they underline certain lines of codes and they have it lying in front of them while they are working behind their computer. So that print component is still quite large for us. Um, within our list, key topics include Java, which is still the biggest programming language in the world right now, if you look at the number of people using it on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, Python, which is the fastest growing programming language right now, um, specifically because it's so suitable for handling and managing large data sets. Cybersecurity, Microsoft and .NET, which is sort of the pillar that originally APRES was built on, and it's still an area that we are very much known for. And we have the Microsoft editor here with us and she will um, speak to that and to some books in that list specifically later on. So cybersecurity and data science in general. Next slide, please. Good afternoon. Uh, thanks for coming. My name is Susan McDermott, and I'm an executive editor at APRESS. I'm going to talk a little bit about APRESS book authors. APRESS authors are programmers, developers, experts, and thought leaders in their disciplines. They're working professionals, very often writing their books alongside their day jobs. We acquisitions editors look to find the most qualified authors for the subjects we publish. We find our authors in a variety of ways, such as direct contact at conferences and industry events, connections through existing authors, reaching out on social media, and many more. Our key authors are well-known experts in their fields, and all of the authors you see here have each written more than three successful titles. Their accomplishments speak volumes about the caliber of talent they possess. Writing on such core topics as Salesforce, Microsoft, and Maker and 3D printing, Phil, Joan, Andrew, and Dan are true partners with APRESS. We look to them and our other authors for guidance on the respective fields and to get an idea of what's coming next. Next slide, please. Hi everyone, happy to be here. Um, my name is Shiva and I'm the business editor at APRESS. So within the business list, we have a couple of series that do well for us and have proven to be um, useful to our audience and community. So to start with, we have the AtWork series, um, which is um, every book in the AtWork series um, holds in-depth interviews with industry leaders. So starting with Founders at Work, we have um, I think it published in 2001, and we had the author, uh, Jessica Livingston, um, interview people like Steve Wozniak from Apple and Max Levchin from PayPal, and it continues to sell really well, so it stood the uh, test of time, and it's still relevant today. Um, and uh, most recently, we did Asian Founders at Work, which looks at the same thing, um, startup founders in Asia, like in Philippines or in India, how they're setting up their companies and what sort of challenges they face. So um, it's valuable insights straight from the source, and it's not just founders. We have data professionals at work, female um, tech innovators um, at work, and gamers at work, project managers at work. So it's really like, really like a reference for professionals who are looking to map their journeys against someone who's in the same field and is successful. Um, so it's a really great series um, to check out. Um, next slide, please. Another one is the basic series by APRESS. Um, so it's a non-technical introduction to a new technology. So we started with Blockchain Basics in 2017 um, and we published the book and we it was doing really well and we realized there was this space where people knew there was something new on the horizon in terms of technology and wanted to learn about what it was, but didn't want to get bogged down with the technical jargon um, and, and get confused by that. So Blockchain Basics is non-technical and it did really well um, for that audience, um, business leaders or team 
thinking leaders who are looking to understand technology or just the layman um, looking to understand blockchain. Um, in 2019, we did artificial intelligence basics and we still had the same sort of success with it we found an audience um, that really wanted to know how um, what the impact of AI would be um, over in business and in society um, and so we've been trying to grow in the space and that's been our focus so we have upcoming basics titles like IOT basics and cloud basics um, um, so yeah so we are looking to grow in that space more next slide Hello, this is Velmoet again. Um, as mentioned before, there are more and more people who want to learn how to code. And we have a whole range of books, beginner's books, and absolute beginner's books to help them do that. What we have seen in particular in the past three months when we were all in this world forced to be home a lot and to work from home a lot and to um, yeah, think about what to do with time that we suddenly had. What we have really seen is that a lot of people have used that time to upskill, either to learn something entirely new, a new skill or programming language, or to, to just update their existing knowledge. And we've really seen this in the popularity of our beginning books, in particular beginning Python, because again, that's the fastest growing uh, language right now. Um, so yeah, we have a range of books specifically for beginners and we will always very clearly indicate what the intended audience of the book is and make sure that the content of the book matches that. So if you look at the description text for our books on the back cover or wherever you're looking at those description texts, it will always end with the section called who this book is for. And there we will say that it's a beginner's book or that it's an intermediate book, or that it's advanced or pro. And in that way, we offer readers basically a pathway throughout Python or Java or JavaScript or whatever the skill is that people want to learn. Next slide, please. Hello everyone, my name is Joan and I am a Microsoft editor with A Press. It's great to be here today. Um, I just want to say a few words about coding and young people. Um, it, it's a trend that we at A Press are very, very aware of and publishing for. Um, you know, more and more teenagers than ever before are coding. Um, they're learning earlier through games um, like Minecraft. Um, online applications like CodeSpark, Steam camps and code camps that are happening throughout the school year and at libraries and in the community. Um, these, uh, these teenagers are, they're surpassing, their knowledge is surpassing their parents and even, even most millennials when it comes to what they know in internet usage and tech being tech savvy. They're less interested now um, in having kind of these cookie cutter apps and more interested in having um, technology that they can work with and they can use uh, for their benefit. Um, big corporations like Microsoft and Apple, um, they're recognizing this market. Um, and they have been out there offering free tools, incentives, and contests for these, these young people, these teenagers. Um, Apple hosts the Swift Student Challenge every year at their large events. Microsoft hosts the Imagine Cup. And these events give students um, and young people, teenagers, motivation to create some really uh, amazing applications. And we want to take advantage of that. We want to promote that. So we do a lot of publishing here. Um, and also, um, you know, this whole learning to code now, um, this, this really ties in with today's teenager um, and this generation's um, interest in changing the world. Um, you know, gone is the moniker that, that, you know, coding is for nerds. It is the cool thing to do. Um, it is something that allows these teenagers to have a real impact on the world and they are using it. Um, they're using it for their own, you know, for their own platforms, for poverty, for bullying, for all sorts of, um, you know, for climate change, um, uh, you know, just so many different applications. So it's, it's great to see. So these are just a few um, of the titles that we're showcasing today for this talented and, and curious generation. Um, Programming 101, Python for Teenagers, um, the beginning robotics with Raspberry Pi and Arduino. Um, Raspberry Pi has been just so instrumental um, to, to getting students, to young people involved in building their own things. Um, and then Game Maker Studio. So 
Anyway, thank you. <laughs> Next slide. To talk a little bit, sorry, there I am. <laughs> To talk a little bit more about um, the business list and how we are tying in with tech, um, I think the two audiences that I've seen exist within the business list is one explaining new technologies to non-techies. So we have blockchain basics and the basic series, like you saw, um, that really explains new technologies that are coming up. But also we have a book that does really well, uh, How to Speak Tech, um, which again is a bite have, has bite-sized chapters about different technologies that someone in a professional role might want to know. Um, we also have the AI-powered work workplace for anybody working um, in an office and trying to understand how AI is going to change that. Um, the second audience that we have is, um, again, developers and programmers who are looking for business skills. So a book that I can think of is um, Thriving in the Gig Economy that we published um, a year ago, which looks at how freelancers, um, technical people who are in the freelance world trying to find gigs, how they would go about finding it, how to um, make it lucrative, how to have a career um, just freelancing with tech gigs, or something even um, looking at project management um, within a team, um, if you're someone who's a developer or programmer. So we have lots of books on that as well. Um, a third audience that I've seen over the past couple of years come up is um, just the layman audience, people who are trying to understand um, how tech and society are inter uh, interacting in interesting ways and new ways. So um, an example of that is um, data versus democracy, which looks at how big data algorithms are changing the way we see the world. So your Twitter feed, your Facebook feed, all of that is changing um, because of uh, algorithms and it's being catered and curated for you and what that does um, to your understanding of the world. Um, another one is um, for business leaders, understand, manage, and prevent algorithmic bias. So something that looks at um, how if you're a business professional, a leader, a startup founder, looking to understand how your product uh, might be uh, producing algorithms that are biased and want to equip your team um, and yourself um, with more knowledge on how to not do that, you can um, buy that book and, and you know, understand more about it. We have really great um, t uh, books coming up. So we have Digital Design for Kids that will publish this year. Um, that's looking at um, how to design ethically and effectively for kids. We have Disruption in the Boardroom also coming up this year. That's looking at um, how a traditional board can um, face challenges that may be coming up with new technologies and a transparency because of technology. So like Twitter and Facebook and having these conversations because of technology. And um, Pitch Perfect, which looks at how um, a startup founder or someone who's developing an app or a digital product can pitch their uh, product to investors or to their own audience. So those are just a few that are coming up and a little bit of a taste of the business list. Next slide, please. Hi, this is Susan again. Um, I'm gonna talk about security. That's uh, an area that I, I manage. Um, so globally, almost 30% of organizations are likely to suffer at least one data breach over the next 24 months at an average cost of $8.1 million per breach. Over $45 billion of cybersecurity investment has been made over the past 15 years, yet breaches continue. Why is that? The shortage of technical security staff, the migration, the rapid migration to cloud computing, regulatory compliance requirements, and the unrelenting evolution of threats continue to be the most significant ongoing major security challenges. The likelihood of suffering a data breach affects companies of all shapes and sizes in every industry, finance, education, healthcare, and more. Protecting your company's data is more important now than ever. Our security titles provide real world processes and solutions to computer, information, network, and cybersecurity. They cover tools and techniques used for penetration testing and ethical hacking, incident preparedness and response, data security and investigations, risk management, cyber defense, and more. Next slide, please. Hello, everyone. Joan here again. Um, I just want to mention some of our recently um, published books, our new and notable titles, um, hot off the press. Um, we have ProAngular uh, 9 and ProASP.net Core. These are revisions um, that come from our most prolific author, Adam Freeman. Um, Adam authors books uh, mainly on Microsoft and web developer technologies. He's published more than 35 books for A Press. Um, most of his books are bestsellers. Um, his ASP.net Core book is now in its eighth edition, um, and it is the best-selling ASP.net book of all time. Um, 
I've worked with Adam for a few years now. Uh, I know a lot of his customers. Um, and, and what I hear, what I understand about what makes Adam's books so great are really his approach. Um, he builds code, he breaks it, and he writes not only what's a, a, what is a comprehensive book that contains the latest functionalities for a technology, but he also provides really tried and true wisdom um, regarding the strengths, strengths and the shortcomings of the technology. So this, you know, not something that the enterprises or documentation will ever do, and developers love this. Um, so he provides information that's not easily easily found, and, and you know, he's just a great, great communicator. Um, another book that we have here, um, this is the Startups in Action book. Um, this is a title from our business line. Um, this book is really interesting. It covers the first year journey of some very, very well-known, uh, well-regarded, successful startups that we all know, like Etsy, Hotel Tonight, um, Fiverr. And it goes through a, a series of discussions with the people um, who were there and working the very first year with these companies. And that's, that's really compelling and interesting. Um, there's a lot of business discussions, analysis, um, and the author is very, very well connected with these startups. So he's been, um, uh, the author's been a very, very instrumental in helping to promote this book. Um, Another title that we are, are, are highlighting here is the C++ 20 Recipes book. Um, this is a new edition that we have on, um, on a, a topic that's fairly uh, mature, a mature language, but it has a huge user base. Um, I mentioned this book because it really highlights um, a learning approach uh, that we use, we enlist very often at APRESS, which is uh, the recipe style. Um, so enlisting a problem, providing a solution, um, and working through the code. So it's been, it's, it, this kind of type of book is very popular um, with developers. Um, that pretty much sums it up. Uh, there's one other thing I just want to, to mention. Um, you know, all of our programmers, uh, programming books, um, and that would be the three titles you see on there, the black and gold titles, but all of our programming books have a lot of what developers love most, and that's code. Code, code, code. It's a beautiful thing. Um, so we have free code, uh, freely available code that appears for each book um, found on GitHub, which is the most popular open code repository in the world. And that's something that's, you know, really, really compelling to our readers and that we're, we're happy to provide. Um, so, yeah. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so here um, we've got a few of our forthcoming titles that are publishing late, later this year. So I want to just say a few words about them. Um, the titles that you see here, they really run um, the gamut um, from novice to developer. Um, but what they all have in common is that these authors are very, very well regarded. They're active, they're visible in their communities, in their respective fields. Um, you know, we as editors, seek out um, the best developers and IT professionals. Um, we, we are very much out there in the trenches in the communities. Um, we closely monitor the technical trends that are happening in our respective um, communities of coverage. For me, that would be the Microsoft developer space. Um, and we're always seeking um, new topics and trends and flagging, most importantly, rock stars like these authors that, that, are, um, that have written these four books. Um, so these, these titles are just a sampling, um, but I'm just going to share a few words about, um, about each of them. Pro C Sharp and .NET Core, um, that is a title that's now in its ninth edition. Um, the author, Andrew Trollson, um, is an excellent communicator and a great coder. Um, and it has been said in the community that this author has been pivotal in the adoption of the .NET. Uh, the .NET framework, the .NET platform, um, you know, actually being approachable uh, by developers. Um, the, the .NET framework is huge and massive, and, and Andrew Trollson has this ability to take it apart and explain it and, and help developers learn it in an I'm there with you um, sort of way and, and helping them, you know, connect the dots. Um, the, the next book here, Beginning C++ 20, um, this is a title um, by Ivor Horton. Uh, he's a brilliant coder, and this is a language that's been around for a long time, 
but he still inspires um, the large user base of these developers to say, you know, hey, I'm, uh, try something new, be, challenge yourself to become a better coder. Um, and that's something that always all developers aspire to do and aspire to be better developers. Um, Azure SQL Revealed um, is a title by Bob Ward. He's a Microsoft program manager, and he is adored by the SQL Server community. Um, he's got a, an amazing ability to connect with, with developers, um, to connect the dots for them, to respond to their query. He's, he's just um, a, a great author and a great communicator. Um, and finally, um, uh, a look here at Electronics for Beginners. Um, this title is a nod to what Velmood had mentioned earlier, a gateway for getting comfortable with computers uh, and building up confidence. Um, and that is just such a, a great entryway for, for today's beginner developers. So um, that's just a quick look at um, some of our titles. We have many more coming, um, and I encourage you to take a look at them. Um, next slide, please. Okay, great. Thank you so much to the APRESS team. Round of applause. I'm clapping from here <laughs> out to the GoToMeeting world. If you want to know more about APRESS or stay informed or keep in touch, uh, you can follow at APRESS on Twitter, Facebook, or LinkedIn. For um, blog posts and to hear from the tech community and authors and editors, you could go to apress.com slash US slash blog. Or for the latest books, subject highlights, or to get to know APRESS better, visit www.apress.com. And moving on, we have for our uh, book series, a, uh, we also have a launch, a trade catalog launch that coincides with it. Um, in the trade catalog, you'll find our upcoming books, recently published titles, and our best-selling backlist in this collection. The books that are curated in the fall catalog reflects, just as Marit said earlier, a Springer Nature's mission to advance discovery. The trade catalog includes our publicity, marketing, and key commercial-facing titles. And I just want to preface that this catalog was created to make it easier for booksellers or uh, librarians to learn about our trade offerings. And it's truly a glimpse at growing trends and highlights from Springer Nature in any given subject. So uh, especially tech, as you saw today, but all the way from business to zoo animals, if you're curious about any of those subjects. Um, all titles that were presented by, by APRESS are also featured in this catalog, and this catalog is also on Edelweiss. And speaking of Edelweiss, for uh, Springer Nature, we do have uh, quite the Edelweiss presence. We have various curated catalogs and a section devoted to bookstores. Featured in the curated catalogs, we have our quarterly key titles collection, our front list books highlighted, our imprint catalogs. Um, You'll find a dedicated A Press imprint catalog there as well. Uh, we have our subject bestseller. So if you're curious about one subject like math or um, business, you'll definitely find them there. Um, we also have a for bookstore section, which has a um, subfield that was created specifically with booksellers, uh, whether indie, national chain, or librarians, uh, public or classroom in mind. Um, we have our trade catalog feature, the one I just mentioned in the previous slide. We have regional catalogs representing the West, the Midwest, the South, Northeast, and, and Canada themed uh, books. Uh, today, we actually launched a specialty collection for Black Lives Matter from Springer Nature. It's now available on Edelweiss. Uh, the books in this collection uh, are all tied to issues raised by the Black Lives Matter movement. So you'll find all subjects uh, such as race and history, identity, social inequality, and ethnicity, ethnicity in this collection. And of course, um, you can reach out to your Springer Nature sales rep for more information or guidance on our resources in Edelweiss as well. And just to close out our book talk, um, we do want to uh, open the forum up for questions. If anybody has them, please put them in the chat box. Or if you'd like, you can unmute yourself and we will do our best to answer anything sales or editorial related to APRESS. So no questions in the chat box. So definitely encourage anyone who might have a question to ask.
All right, maybe silence is golden. I think everyone did a great job. I hope everyone is still there. <laughs> yes. But I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Yes, 